Today we're installing a windshield in the 63 for the second time. We're taking the old one out, putting the new one in, and then we're going to try to get the stainless trim on for the second time. And Hopefully we're not going to break this one. So be sure to stick around. We're at the movies, huh? Yep, we're at the movies. Alright, so it's time to yank this windshield out and put in our new one because if you didn't know, there is a crack over there. Um, so that happened when we were putting on the exterior windshield trim. The windshield itself went in fine, everything else worked out well except that crack. Um, the top piece went in fine, the bottom piece wouldn't go, and that's when we got the crack. Um, I have a new windshield coming that should be here tomorrow, so I want to pull this one out um, to get the opening ready for the new one. The sealant I used has cured up since whenever we put it in. Um, it was a few months down the road, so the windshield could have sagged down in the opening a little bit and could have made it a little hard to put in down here and open it up up here. So I think what I want to do this time is now that I have all, I have all the pieces of trim, they're all polished, pull this one out, clean the opening, start to put this one in, and I think I want to have the bottom started, maybe rope it up to about here on both sides try putting the bottom piece on, then continue to rope it up, go the whole way across the top, and then put the top piece in, and then the side pieces. I think that'll be a little easier, and then obviously all the stuff on the inside goes in next. So that's what we're going to try to do. So first, I've got to yank everything out of the inside, uh, just the, the two visors, the rear view mirror and support, and then the four pieces of windshield trim that go around here. And then I'm going to try to save this gasket, um, but if I can't, then I can't. Um, since it's only me working on it, I'm going to put some extra insurance on this. I'm going to put some duct tape from this side of the windshield to this side, but I'm going to uh, put some painter's tape backwards or some rags or something so no, nothing actually sticks to the paint. It'll just be glass on one side to glass on the other side. I'll put a couple of those on each side. That way it doesn't flop out. And then I'll put some of my fender covers around here for extra protection. Alright, so I took off all the inside trim for the windshield, sun visors, and the rearview mirror. Just set them in the back of the car for now. So it's ready to go on the inside. Um, I had to loosen the pieces of trim that go across here, and on that side I had to loosen the corner to move that piece around because uh, the one in the front clips into it. So I had to play around with that a little bit. So now I put a little bit of duct tape on the windshield to make sure whenever I'm working it out it doesn't flop out. I'll put more pieces on as I go but I still need to work this rubber out from behind here. So my plan is just to go in here with my pick tool that I use to put the windshield in and peel back the rubber and kind of push it Peel it back the whole way and start to push the glass back out. Now, if that doesn't work, then I'll just cut the rubber um, because I really don't care about this this gasket. But what I'm going to do is just try to take it out as one piece.
All right, so I yanked the windshield out. So that actually wasn't too bad. The approach I was doing at first was just trying to peel the rubber back from the back and force it over the front. That worked a little over here. On that side, I was able to peel it up. And then whenever I did that, it was kind of um, walking in on the outside of the windshield. So I was able to cheat it over enough that I could start to actually pull the windshield out of the rubber from the front. And then once I got it far enough out, I was able just to peel the rubber down to get a lot more clearance, work it over. I ended up sliding it over a bit and was just able to yank the whole thing out. So that wasn't exactly what I planned to do, but it worked. So uh, pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to lay some towels or something over the dash and all the nice stuff because I want to clean up some of this goop. My idea before we put the windshield in dry, except for by the clips, my idea was to squirt some of that sealant in, and as you can see, it's pretty much bone dry. Uh, so I think the next go around, I don't know if I'll use the same sealant, I might try something else. Um, but I think I'm going to try to put a little bit on this edge, just to at least give it a skim coat and uh, allow that to bond, because the windshield leaked. It's interesting that the crack, you can't actually feel it from the top or the bottom, so it cracked whenever that clip bumped into it, it must have caught a high point between these two pieces of the laminated glass and it just shot a crack inside of it up. Well, we got our windshield box, so let's crack this thing open and see what we got, make sure it's not cracked. It comes in a very, very big box, and the warranty is if you open it, I think within 24 hours and inspect it, I mean, if there's no damage, obviously you're good, but if does have damage, they'll send you a new one free of charge. So let's open it up, and I like to use these uh, door panel poppers for these kind of staples. It works pretty well, so let's open it up. So I unpackaged the windshield, and it was double boxed, and there's a huge amount of packing material and extra cardboard they use in this thing so these are packed really well shipping was only $75 so to get this much packing material and this kind of warranty on it is a pretty good pretty good deal so I thought we were going to be able to use a new old stock rubber um, but turns out the one we got I'm pretty sure it's for a hard top it's a lot smaller and has two pointed corners they're not at the top they're more on the sides so it looks like it might be that rubber um, but this one it feels maybe exactly the same as that one but I don't know it kind of feels a little bit softer and a little more pliable so we'll go with that So you saw I put the gasket on the windshield and I put the rope in the channel that goes around for the body. And this is the rope that I use. This stuff works well. I got it from Lowe's. I was able to do well two windshields and then the two back windows with that one pack. So there's a lot of rope in there. Um, but like I said, I just started with the corners. I worked my way around. So it went on pretty easy. Just kind of to tap it to make sure it's seated. And then once you put the rope in, you kind of have to make sure it's fully seated again. Um, I like to start with the bottom, so I leave a little bit of a gap here just so that the two ropes don't get caught up on each other or caught up on the clips. So just lay the windshield in, and I can use that picking tool to kind of start this middle in, and then you can start pulling on the edges. So since there's only one of me today, I'm going to use my GoPro mount and suction cup it to the middle of the windshield to take the top part off. But I think these hold like 50 or 100 pounds. So I can use this guy to help pull to make sure the windshield's fully seated whenever I'm getting it started in the middle. Um, so now it's time to goop up the windshield channel. I think I'm just going to squirt some of this stuff on a plate and then put a rubber glove on and then just put a light film the whole way around the windshield channel. Then I'll drape some stuff over the interior so I don't make a mess in there. So 
So put the adhesive or the bedding compound along the windshield channel, just kind of a thin coat, and I tried to push it onto the clips whenever I got to that area. Um, I think mainly they leak in the corners, so I took a little bit extra attention to make sure I got it around there. I'm going to let that tack up for a little bit before I put the windshield in. That way it's not as messy because you can, well, might not be able to see. There's some strings hanging, so it gets really stringy whenever it's, um, whenever it's fresh. So it seemed to work pretty well putting it on my fingers uh, when I had gloves on and just smearing it on there. It's definitely a messy job. This stuff is not the funnest stuff to clean up. So a nice thin coat is probably all, all that we need. So now we'll go on to putting the windshield in. So I think I'm just going to just plop it in carefully, make sure it's even on both sides, and then I'll try to hold pressure on it and pull, pull the ropes out. And then I brought my lower piece of trim out from the basement so that whenever I get to about here, I can try to get that piece of trim installed and then keep working our way up. So we'll see how that works out. I've heard of people having to do it this way, but I've never done it myself. So we'll see how it works out. So I have the windshield almost the whole way in. You can see I have one string here and one there. They're about even. Um, so I wanted to get it most of the way in there. Once I started going around this top corner, the windshield started pulling down. So I didn't want to push down too much before, until I got this trim in. So I marked all the clip locations. And the first go I had at this, I got the ends in. And then I couldn't get these few in the middle seated. One issue was the rubber was being pulled further in on the windshield um, and that was caused by the clips being too close to the rubber. So up here you can might be able to see it. there's a couple that are real close and there's an air gap between that clip. So what you want to do is you want your clip to be able to put a screwdriver in there and you should be able to open that clip up and it should be able to rotate up and touch the rubber. Now these clips here the rubber was actually touching so what I had to do is take a razor blade and shave rubber behind it to allow those to open up. So once those opened up, this slid right in, no problem. So, gotta, and when you're going around, make sure the rubber is actually fully seated on the windshield. It was kind of falling back there. So what I'm gonna do is continue through the middle, continue slapping it to make sure it's fully seated, and then we'll try to get this top piece uh, a trim on there before I get too, too far. And then we'll clean everything up and we can put those side pieces on last. So I had a bit of battle, like I said, with the bottom piece until I realized I needed to make some trim trims around the clips in the middle, but the second time it went on very easily, roped in the rest of the glass easy, and this trim went on really, really nice. That corner, well, this corner over here may be sticking up a little higher than it should be. I think it's good. 
I think it's good. What I found is if you make it a little off center, we measured side to side, put the center and matched it up with the spine of the car. Um, the way these are curved, you can cheat it one way or another and it'll make it line up a little better. So really this could probably move that way a little bit to fix that curve. So I may try to do that. But I was you saw me smacking the windshield a lot. This side was not fully seated. Um, that side was. But as soon as I got the rope out and I patted it down, you could see the whole windshield sink. And I was able to pat it and push it. And these clips weren't even showing. And by doing that, I could see all the clips then. And I can tell it's fully seated in the car. And it looks, it looks really good. So now I have to clean up my mess both inside and outside. And then put these side pieces on. And then put the interior pieces back together. But I'm really happy with the way that turned out. I was a little worried it wasn't going to work the way I had planned, but it worked out perfectly. Like I said, it's a little bit messy, but hopefully the windshield won't leak this time and the trim's on. It's just very dirty. So I got the windshield all cleaned up. I basically gave it a bath and goo gone. I gave a few passes with that to get most of the glue off. Then I used the Armor All wipes um, and spray to get the goo gone off and to get all the streaks off. So I cleaned almost all the glue off that was around here. And on the inside of the windshield, I cleaned the glue off of the rubber that you'll that you'll see. So that goo gone works really well for that. And it turned out really, really good. So once I get these side pieces on, I can do a final clean. Like I said, I've cleaned this thing like 10 times. So it'll still need a couple more just to get it, get it perfect. So now I'm gonna put the two side, I have on the bench the two side pieces. The windshield's installed, the trim is on, and the windshield wipers are on. And that completes all the pieces on the split window. That was the last cherry on top. I was just waiting to get this area finished up, and now it is done. So the number one thing that people noticed at Corvettes at Carlisle that was wrong with the car was it was missing the windshield trim, and the wiper arms weren't on it. So that concludes the split window. There's still a couple things to fine-tune on it. Um, got to get the speedo to work properly. But other than that, every single piece is installed on the split window. The inside windshield trim is back on. A little bit of paint to touch up in there. And there's just a little little things uh, to finish up. But overall, like I said, everything is on the car and it is fully complete. So since the car is done, the next video you see after this will be a complete time lapse. Um, at the beginning, I'll start off with just pictures because I didn't have a GoPro when we started restoring this car but it'll be a total evolution from the beginning to the end to this point. So it'll go from pictures, have video, have time lapses to show you. Hopefully it'll be about 15, maybe 10 to 15 minutes long and we'll show the whole progression of the car beginning to end to show where this car started and where it is now. So be sure to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Check out the rest of my channel. Make sure you subscribe 
And if you have any questions about the windshield install, I have another video that I did on the windshield install, and I did one on the back windows. So this will be a total of three videos on roping in windows. And I think we finally debugged it this time. Uh, I think the biggest issue was that the windshield was down a little too far. Um, the sealant was clogging up uh, the trim going in, and it was a little too fat there. Uh, so. I think it got hard and it wouldn't let the trim go in and then we just didn't trim the rubber away enough. Um, we thought the reproduction rubber may be to blame but it turns out this one worked perfectly fine and I was able to do this one myself so it actually wasn't that bad. So I'm going to say reproduction rubber is good. Reproduction clips, they worked fine. Um, so I'm happy with it. Windshield, reproduction windshield worked perfectly also. The only thing you can't get reproduction trim so you have to use what you have but everything clipped in the way it should none of this trim came off of this car and it fit perfectly so actually wasn't that hard of an install